Hey guys, Heidi Preep here. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome back if you are not. On this channel, we talk about all things personality type, attachment styles, and any other systems that give us a window into understanding ourselves and other people. So today, I wanted to talk about something that I felt like I sort of left unaddressed in a video that I made a couple months back about the best and worst jobs for ENFPs. So best and worst career options is something that is widely attributed to type, and I think that Absolutely, there are better and worse career choices for anyone of any type, but I think that the more important thing to look at when we're looking at how do we spend our careers, how do we spend our lives, what do we choose to engage with, is not necessarily the what we choose to do, but the how we choose to do it. So what career you pick is not as important as what you as an individual bring to that career and how you are showing up to it day to day. So there was one thing I felt like I neglected to say when we talked about best and worst careers for ENFPs, and that is that no matter what career you're doing, no matter where you find yourself in life, no matter which situations you happen into, the most important asset that you have as a human being that you need to be protecting nurturing and taking care to grow and expand upon throughout your life is your energy. Now, this is true for every single type. So I feel a little bit scammy titling this video just for ENFPs, but I do think that the way we manage our energy as ENFPs is fairly different than the way that most other types manage their energy. The main exception to this being ENTPs who share our dominant cognitive function and will kind of have a similar process for what energizes and depletes them. But today I wanted to talk about both some myths that I think we have around ENFPs and why most of us don't intellectually choose to prioritize our energy, as well as how we can start doing that and what it will mean if we do. So the first obvious question is, what do I mean by energy? By your energy, I mean the feeling in your body that you are firing on all cylinders, you are wide awake, very present with whatever you're experiencing or thinking about or turning over in your mind, and you are able to fully attend to what you want to be attending to. So that's what I'm talking about when I say energized, as opposed to feeling like you are kind of calling it in in your life. So a lack of energy would manifest as you kind of going through the motions, zoning out, not really being where you are, not really bringing a lot of yourself to the task, but just kind of reacting to what the world wants from you. And I think that a lot of ENFPs live in that space for a lot of their lives, particularly if they grow up in environments where their natural energy orientation, where the places that you get energy from are not valued by the people around you. And you can kind of assume this is just what life is. I have things I'm excited about that I don't value. And then the things that I think are important in life are the things that make me feel kind of dead inside. So I just force myself to go through those motions. And I think that that in particular can be a trap that leads a lot of ENFPs to fall into careers and life situations that are not right for them because we don't know that there can be another way and that we are allowed to prioritize another way. So before we get into how to hone in on and expand upon that natural sense of energy, I want us to bust the myth that doing what energizes other people, so again, when we look at the personality composition of the world, we have a lot of sensing judging types and we have a lot of sensing perceiving types and we do not have nearly as many intuitive perceiving types, which is what you are as an ENFP. And so a lot of us grow up taking the lead from sensing judging types who have this kind of one best way approach to getting things done because that's what works for them. They are very procedurally oriented. They work really well when they're following a very specific plan to get to a very specific endpoint, and that is how they gain their energy. But that is precisely our process as intuitive perceiving types for losing energy, is limiting our options, putting our blinders on, and not being creative in any fashion. So a lot of us think, okay, in order to be productive, successful, have a good life, I need to orient myself the way that SJs orient themselves. But what ends up happening is we end up creating so much mental resistance between the way that we naturally are oriented and want to go out and experience and explore the world and what we are forcing ourselves to do, which is narrow our focus and do things in a linear way, that that mental resistance that ends up coming up for us 
ends up costing us time and money. So I spent years of my life trying to play the SJ game as most NPs do at some point in their life, and I hit a wall at one point where I was so exhausted by what I was doing that I would spend hours upon hours upon hours procrastinating. It felt sometimes like my full-time job was procrastination, and I felt so stupid because I had the option to be making a lot of money. I had clients who were willing to pay me a lot of money for a service that I was not particularly passionate about, but that I did well. And I was not making nearly the amount I could be making because I was experiencing so much mental resistance that I could not get most of my work done and I was also spending all of my time outside of work just feeling chronically stressed about the work that I was not living up to. Now, the problem is that during that time, I was not growing very much as a human being because this preoccupation with the stress of what I thought I should be doing better at was eating away at my brain and my mental health. And so even though I was in theory making a lot of money and doing a good job by more traditional standards, I was absolutely murdering my soul in the process and creating more and more and more depression and anxiety and resistance inside of my own mind. And that resistance at the time was costing me in concrete dollars and cents. I could have pushed myself through endlessly and ended up in a career where I would honestly probably be making more money than I was right now, but that career would be murdering my mental health and my soul in the process. And the number one thing I want to promise you is that nothing is worth that at the end of your life, okay? No amount of money. When you are going down that path where you are trading your energy and your life force for something tangible like money or other resources, this will only work for so long. You will hit a burnout point and when that burnout point hits, you will be forced to prioritize your energy again, okay? But if you wait until it gets to that point, as I did, it can take absolute years to turn that back around. And the only way to turn it around is to force yourself to put getting your energy and vitality and sense of self back at the center of your life. Because when you are an ENFP or an ENTP or any other type that values any highly in their cognitive stacking, what your brain naturally wants to do is learn as much as it can possibly learn through having different experiences, through exploring different philosophies, through understanding the world using a million different lenses. And this is the absolute food that you need to be giving your soul in order to thrive. And if there is a single thing I would hope for ENFPs, if there is a single piece of advice I would give or a single piece of wisdom I wish that I could offer to my younger self, it's that you have to put your energy at the center of your life. You have to be willing to sacrifice money, opportunities that you don't really want, relationships that do not feel right, career opportunities that do not feel right, anything that gives you this gnawing kind of sense of, oh, that's not quite me and my body, you have to be willing to put aside in order to prioritize feeding your mind and your body and your soul. As an ENFP, Feeding your mind, body, and soul looks very different than what the traditional profile of wellness might look like, right? So for you, this does not mean having these extremely stringent wellness routines where you do the same thing day after day after day, which is what it might look like for, let's say, an SJ type. For you, wellness does mean having new adventures, having new experiences, making lots of diverse new friends, putting yourself out there, going for the things that you want, and allowing yourself to make seemingly impractical choices insofar as you're able to do so. Your energy is oriented towards that exploration of life. Okay, that is what makes you feel alive. It's what makes you feel invigorated. It's what makes you feel curious and invested in the world. And if there is anything I can promise you, it's that if you prioritize your energy above all else in the long run, that will pay off for you infinitely more than if you are to follow a traditional path that drains you, okay? Because you are able to do a lot more with your intellect a lot more quickly than the average person. I know I'm like not supposed to say stuff like that in type videos, but you do have this incredibly active, incredibly sharp intellect. 
extroverted intuition is able to absorb an almost terrifying amount of information and make sense of it and connect it to tangible external reality in a way that other people understand. And that is a superpower that probably nobody has taught you how to nurture because extroverted intuition is not that common. It's especially not that common as a dominant cognitive function. So if you are not feeding yourself new ideas, new experiences, and new thoughts, and new challenges on a more or less constant basis, it's like you are willingly operating on a reserve power supply, okay? When you could be at full power. If you made staying engaged, energized, and interested in your life as the number one priority. And I truly mean number one, because here's how it's gonna pay off. Your superpower is your ability to take in a wide array of very complex information and make sense of it simply. Not many people have this skill. I promise you. Not many people are able to grasp complex theories as quickly and as easily as you are, and even fewer people are able to communicate those ideas well, and even fewer people are able to entertain and engage people in the process, okay? but. If you are trying to produce before you have given yourself the opportunity to fully experience and integrate your experiences, it's kind of like pulling pasta out of a pot when it is still half raw, okay? You might have the best pasta noodles on earth, but if you are not allowing them to cook fully, you are not going to be serving a meal that is useful or valuable for anyone. So I hit a point after I had reached this kind of burnout point in my career, where I realized I need to go have a lot of new experiences and I need time to integrate everything that I have been learning over the past several years. And I did this at a time that was completely impractical because life had forced me into that situation. I hit a wall so hard that there was no recovering from it. I could not possibly continue to function well in my life with the amount of mental resistance I was facing. There was absolutely no way forward that was feasible. So last fall, after literal years of being able to do almost no client work because I was so exhausted from the field that I was in, I took six weeks off at a time when it was completely impractical. I went into debt to do this. It was not by any means the practical thing to do. And I completely disconnected and went solo hiking for six weeks. And when I came back, having spent time analyzing, integrating, and becoming deeply familiar with everything that I had been mulling over and considering and thinking about over the past several years, I launched into one of the most productive streaks of my life. For literal years before this fall, I would have a single client project and I would spend three weeks not doing it and one day doing it, okay? When I came back, I began producing every single day. I started a YouTube channel. I started putting out videos every day. I started writing and creating content for future courses again. And none of that would have been possible if I had not taken a giant break and put regaining my energy and my connection to myself at the absolute center of my life, even at a time when it was impractical to do so. As an ENFP, when you are firing on all cylinders, you are able to produce and create at a level that is far above the average person. When you are firing at all cylinders, you are producing insights and thoughts and perspectives that are far above what the average person can produce. This is not to say you are better than other types. Every single type has something that they do at an above average caliber. And when you are leaning fully and completely into your explorative and introspective nature, you are able to produce thought work at an extremely high level. But in order to do that, you have to be willing to feed your mind and soul first. There is absolutely no way to circumnavigate this, and I know, because I have tried everything under the sun. I promise you when I say that to try to circumnavigate this and to try to live in a way that is counter to how my natural energy is oriented. It does not work. The only thing it gives you is results that you don't want because even if you are able to make a shit ton of money through it, which I was, you will have to be spending that money to maintain a lifestyle that you don't like 
and you will have to surround yourself with people who you don't feel inspired by. And you will have to continuously conform to these expectations that you do not feel aligned with. And I promise you, nothing is worth that. No amount of money is worth that. No amount of life is worth that, okay? You owe it to your future self and to anyone in the world who you want to be able to show up and actually give to, to prioritize your energy as the person you actually are. Not doing this is like having a superpower that you never activate. And I personally want to see you activate it because I know what happens when our type feels fully alive and fully engaged with their life. And it is extraordinary and very needed in a world full of people who are pretty used to sleepwalking right? We need that critical analysis. We need that deep and intuitive connection to the self. We need that wisdom that comes from having a lot of experiences and thinking critically about all of them. All of that stuff is stuff that the world is in desperate need of right now. And if you're able to show up for yourself in that way, that ends up being what you're able to offer the world at a time when the world needs it pretty badly. So if you can't prioritize you for yourself, consider prioritizing yourself for the good of the fucking planet. All right, that is my rant for today, but I have been thinking about it for several weeks now and I wanted to get that off my chest and I feel better that I did. So as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I also do run a six week ENFP soul bootcamp course where we talk specifically about this for most of it, how to put your energy and your true self back at the center of your life and letting everything else flow outward. From that. So if you're interested in that, I will leave a link in the description of this video. And as always, I love you guys. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you back here again super soon.